Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a monomer, an addition polymer and a repeating unit. You should then be able to work out the monomer and repeating unit for a given polymer or vice versa. And if you're following the AQA spec you should be able to describe the role of plasticizers. Ok now polymers are used extensively in products and we can divide polymers into two large categories. These are addition polymers and condensation polymers. In this video we're looking at addition polymers. We'll be looking at condensation polymers in a later topic. Now the first key idea you need to understand is that polymers are large molecules and we form polymers by joining together thousands of small identical molecules called monomers. When we form addition polymers the monomers are alkenes. I'm showing you here ethene forming an addition polymer. Polymerization requires high temperature and pressure as well as a catalyst. I'm showing seven ethene molecules but in reality thousands of ethene molecules would form a polymer. When alkenes form a polymer the double bond in the alkene opens up and joins one monomer to another. Now there are a couple of points that you need to bear in mind about this. Firstly the polymer is named by using the word poly followed by the name of the monomer in brackets. So when we polymerize ethene we make polyethene. Polyethene is used to make plastic bags and bottles. Secondly the product polymer has no double bonds in the carbon backbone. So this means that despite being formed from an alkene addition polymers are actually alkanes. Addition polymers contain a large number of carbon to hydrogen and carbon to carbon bonds. These bonds are both non-polar and relatively strong which makes them difficult to break. So because of that addition polymers are unreactive molecules and this lack of reactivity means that addition polymers can exist in the environment for a very long time. Now students often ask about the ends of a polymer molecule. It appears that the carbon atoms at either end only have three covalent bonds. However you need to bear in mind that during polymerization other molecules are added to cap the ends of the polymer chain but you're not required to know anything about that for A level. Now rather than drawing out a whole polymer like this scientists often show the repeating unit. The repeating unit shows the arrangement of atoms that are repeated in the polymer chain. To identify the repeating unit we take any two adjacent carbon atoms on the main chain. We then draw those two carbon atoms plus any atoms above and below. And then we draw square brackets around them like this. Now we draw a covalent bond from each of the two carbon atoms extending through the square brackets. We also need to show how many repeating units are present in the polymer. The polymer I'm showing you here has 14 carbon atoms in the chain so we need to put a number 7 to the right of the repeating unit like this. Now often a polymerization reaction can be represented like this instead. The lowercase n simply means a large number. So the number of repeating units must be the same as the number of monomers to balance the equation. Now if we know the structure of the polymer we can also work out the structure of the monomer used to make it. Again we take any two adjacent carbon atoms on the main chain. We then draw those two carbon atoms plus any atoms above and below. And finally we replace this single bond between the carbon atoms with a double bond. So I'm showing you here both the monomer and the repeating unit for polyethene. Remember that the monomer always has a double bond between the two carbon atoms whereas the repeating unit never has a double bond between the two carbon atoms. Ok I'm showing you here a section of the polymer polychloroethene which is used to make pipes. I'd like you to work out the monomer and the repeating unit so pause the video now and try this yourself. Ok here's the monomer which is the compound chloroethene and here's the repeating unit. This polymer is called polypropene and this is used to make carpets. Again I'd like you to work out the monomer and repeating unit so pause the video now and try this yourself. Ok here's the monomer which is propene and here's the repeating unit. Here's another polymer this is called polyphenylethene and this is used to make foamed food containers and drinks cups. Polyphenylethene is commonly called polystyrene. Again I'd like you to work out the monomer and the repeating unit so pause the video now and try this yourself. Ok here's the monomer which is phenylethene and here's the repeating unit. Now you might be wondering what the side group is in phenylethene. This is called benzene 
and we'll be looking in detail at benzene in a later topic. OK, now if you're following the AQA spec, then you need to be able to describe the role of plasticizers. We've already seen the polymer polychloroethene. This is also called PVC. Now PVC is a rigid polymer that's used to make plastic pipes, among other products. However, if we add a chemical called a plasticizer, we can produce flexible PVC. Flexible PVC is relatively soft and is used to make flooring and the insulation on electrical cables. In PVC, the polymer chains are attracted to each other by intermolecular forces, including both permanent dipole-dipole interactions and London forces. A plasticizer is a small molecule that fits between the polymer chains. This causes the chains to move further apart, and this weakens the intermolecular forces between the chains. So the effect of the plasticizer is to allow the polymer chains to move over each other, making the polymer flexible. In the next video, we look at the environmental impact of polymers. Music